All right, let's stand in church as we uh, prepare our hearts to praise our Savior this morning.
Isn't it awesome to be in the house of God? Amen. Amen. You know, I've said it before, but I don't believe that anybody should be happier than God's people. Amen. Amen. I don't think that anybody should rejoice more than God's people. Amen. 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 You know, I don't know about you. I was talking to some of my brothers and sisters this morning. You can tell the season is changing. Uh-huh. It feels so awesome. Wow. I get excited. I do it. I turn into a 15 year old every year. <laughs>
awesome? You know, and I keep, I keep thinking, honestly, I, I always remember the crucifixion. And I remember Jesus hanging on the cross for me. Amen. But we got to remember the other part. Remember? He was placed in the tomb. And he rose. And that was the victory. And then death could not keep him down, church. Wow.
Exactly how oops. Let me get someone younger. We can see exactly how long this is. This thing is six foot long. That's pretty cool, huh? Or, and we can see how wide it is right here, or how tall it is. 
it's 34 and a half inches tall. That's a pretty cool tool, right? I wonder if it's long enough to measure this guy. We can even see, well, let's see, this guy's like 74 inches up there, man. That's over six foot. That's a pretty tall young man, huh? Wow. You know, we can, even, we can even stretch it out across this room and measure this room. We can measure all kinds of things. We can measure the width of those chairs. We can measure how big our feet are. We can just measure and measure and measure until our hearts grow weary of it. But you know what this one tool cannot measure? God's love. This tool cannot measure how much God loves you. Because it says in the Bible that... Someone's talking to me. I don't know who's talking to me. It cannot measure how big God's love is. Because Jeremiah tells us that God loves us to the ends of the earth. That means He loves us as far as that way is and all the way to that way until it probably comes back around and touches. If we were to stretch our hands all the way around the world and grab the bottom, we couldn't do it because God loves us that much. We can't measure it, but you know what we can do? We can pray about it. Y'all want to pray about God's love? Let's put our hands together. Dear God, thank you so much for loving me to the ends of the earth. Amen. Y'all ready to sing? Put your hands together. <clears throat> Jesus loves me this side or the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. And, and get ready for our centering him, but we got a special guest today. We got a special guest today. Put your hands together. I know there's some teeny boppers out there. Think about how you were when you were back in the 1950s or in the early 60s. And you See, uh, our scripture today comes from Acts. 
Acts 11, 1 through 18. Before I get started, uh, uh, I got to tell you, when I started thinking about doing this sermon series, you know, I told Benny about it, and Benny was all in. He was going, yeah, that's going to be real good, because he loves Elvis. He's a great Elvis in person, and he's got a great voice, so I thought it was fantastic. Then after I got to thinking about it, I got nervous. I got real scared. I'm thinking, man. I read my scripture, and then I reread my scripture, and I got more nervous and more nervous. You can quiz me on my wife uh, this morning. She's in the bathroom with me. I'm in the shower and says, honey, go get the, my phone app and, and read me that scripture again. I don't know what to say. And I guess it was because there's really two important points to that, but I got really concerned when I did this scripture because it, it had a special meaning to me. My wife right now is back there shaking her head. No, no, stay on track. But let us read, let us find some uh, comfort and wisdom in the words of Luke as we read Acts 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. And when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? And then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord. For nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. You know, we could stop right there. That is going to be our first point. But the rest of it I think is just as important. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. Now as we continue to read and we get to talking here in a little while, I want you to remember them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house saying, Send the Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. These are words, God, I hope we find peace and grace amongst them for the people of God. You know, again, as I read that scripture and as I started to ponder upon what these words meant, I always have a habit of going back one page and maybe going forward one page because or one scripture because sometimes what we're supposed to know doesn't really occur in the middle, but it begins in something previous and it really ends in something after that. If we go back one, one uh, verse, back to chapter 10, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and exalting God. You know, if Peter was here in this day and age with me, he would be in front of the board of ordained ministry right now because he sat down with some Gentiles, uns uh, with some uncircumcised people being questioned by the apostles. You know, when I say board of ordained ministry, that's where we go when we get in trouble or they question us. And they, they sit us there, and then all these other elders, they ask us questions. And that's exactly what Peter was going through right there. They said, well, how could you go and sit in a house with people that are different? Them. 
How could you go sit in the house with people that are not like us? For you got to remember, the uncircumcised were the Gentiles. It was the Sumerians. It was the people on the margins. It was the people that, that were considered basically pagans or Muslims because they had no one or they did not have beliefs. The Jewish people were the circumcised people. And they were casting doubt or they were asking Peter, what's up, man? How, how could you dis, uh, disrespect us like that? How could you go against every law that Moses written down that we're supposed to follow to be the people who we are? Being Jewish, they thought, well, you know, and then they came to this quite honestly. It wasn't that big a deal for them because what it came down to was, well, look, Jesus was Jewish. He was circumcised. We're Jewish. We're circumcised. So this new kind of Christ-like thing, well, it's got to be for us, Right? It's got to be for us because we're all alike. We're all the same. These guys over here, the Samaritans are different. The Gentiles are different. The Greeks are different. The Armenians are different. They're all different. So therefore, they are not welcome in Christ's family. And that's where I begin to question some things. That first point... As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying, get up, make your sacrifice, and eat. Quick, quick story. When I was probably the size of LT, my grandson, we moved from Texas to Louisiana. We moved to a, a little place, a little town called Homa, Louisiana. And uh, some friends of ours that lived down the street, they took us to this restaurant. I guess it was a restaurant. It was called Gino's. It wasn't Italian. What they served was shrimp, crawfish, and crab. Well, being from South Texas, we knew what shrimp was. You know, we didn't get it very often because we lived on a farm, so you don't farm a lot of shrimp you know, on a farm. And um, so we sat there and we ordered shrimp. And it, was, it was all boiled, too. It wasn't anything fried. It was just a boil house, what they call now. And so my mom and I and my dad, you know, we sat there and we ordered boiled shrimp. You know, we're struggling to peel it. Well, Mary and Char Charles, the plantists, they ordered boiled crab. My mom came unglued. My mom said, how could you eat it? Look at that thing. It's got pinchers in it. It's got spikes in it. It just looks evil. This is nothing but the devil right here. How are you consuming something of the devil? Now, you know, being from a coastal town now, it's like, your mom, it's pretty tasty. But anyway... You know, she's sitting there and she's having this little moment. And so about that time, a priest walks in. And he sits down at another table with some family. And guess what he ordered? Crap. <laughs> and my mom looked at him and, and looked back at that and looked at him and said, Well, I guess it's really okay to eat it because the, because the priest over here is eating it. See, she was brought up with the mentality or the, the thought that you could only eat certain things and there were certain things that were bad for you. For example, she would not ever, ever eat rattlesnake because it's a snake, it's a serpent. She wouldn't eat that. How many of you ever had rattlesnake? How many of y'all believe that it tastes like chicken? <laughs> it tastes like rattlesnake. I've had it. It's not fried chicken. But Peter, Peter had this vision and he said, nothing will ever pass my lips that will make me unclean. But then God told him, don't say something is unclean. Nothing profane or unclean can ever enter my mouth. But the second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. It goes beyond a simple recipe. It goes beyond food and what we eat. Who did God make? Everyone. God made everything. You see, Jesus, when He came, He searched out the Gentiles. He laid hands upon the lepers, the ill of the society, those who were cast out in the caves, lived in complete isolation. Jesus laid hands upon them. The scales fell off their face. They were made instantly clean. The ten lepers that were walking, when they saw Him, they had so much faith. You know, if we went to Him, He will make us clean. That was enough faith, faith because Jesus cleansed them. Who did Jesus search out? He searched out the woman at the well. A woman that was at the well by herself in the heat of the day at noontime when she knew that it was the only safe time for her to go to collect water. 
And Jesus sat by her. And he talked to her. And he offered her the gift of living water. I guess my first point would be that Jesus came for everyone. He came for those that live next door. He came for those that live on the street. He came for those that live on the margin. He came for those that aren't like you and I. He came for those so we could all worship freely. You know, we have certain faith traditions out there that say that someone's not welcome because, for example, they're female. They're not allowed to fill the pulpit. They can't get up here and preach because they're, they're a woman. I had a long time ago when I was still teaching and just started this gig and, and never really understood what it truly meant to be a pastor. I, I really didn't understand how important it was a, a guy that was a pastor in a non-denominational faith. He came to me and they were arguing in the church about fixing the split because a lady wanted to preach. And he said, no, you can't preach. And he came and asked me, he says, do you know what the Bible says about women? I says, well, yeah, the Bible says a lot of things about women. And, you know, women was the first ones who were actually commissioned to go preach. And he says, no, it says that women can't make a decision because every 30 days they have their period. He said this, and I said, dude, I am not getting involved in your discussion at all. That, that, I don't even believe that. I don't even know why. Well, that's what it says. I says, no, that's not what it says. It says it's just an interpretation that you're coming up with. But you see, that's where we, we get caught up in all the confusion. And that's where I got caught up in the confusion. We're told that we have to be a certain way. We're told that we have to act a certain way. When in reality, we should be acting like Jesus to accept all of those who are seeking His love. Amen? Amen. The second point... God gave them the same gift that He gave, gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could hinder God? There was a young man this morning that uh, came to the traditional service. Had a skateboard, a motorized skateboard. Actually, it's pretty cool. I'm see about getting one of those. He had his hair, uh, he wore this head covering. He had a beard. Shaved his mustache. He said uh, that he, he, he shaved his head because it's part of the Muslim thing. What he? Well, let me just back up. His dad was Pakistanian. His mama was Jewish, and he was born. And he's considered himself as a Muslim Jew Christian. He comes to church. He believes in Jesus Christ. He believes that he was our Savior. And he made this comment. That he wanted to pray for Israel and, and uh, uh, Hamas over there because they were deadlocked in a war now. He said, we are all children of God. God gave everyone the same gift of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just for the twelve in the upper room. It was for all of those in the street. He also did this to the Gentiles. They had the same prophetic power that you and I have. And that tells me that God created everything for equally. But the point to that is, Matthew 15, 11 also says, nothing that a person eats will defile them. What defiles them is what comes out of their heart. And so, when we put certain conditions on people that come to church to worship them, we're, defi we're being defied. We're speaking something that isn't of God. When How many of y'all walk? Anybody go walk? Okay. How many of y'all listen to earbuds or something when you're walking down the street? I got something else for you. Instead of doing that, walk down the street. You can still listen to me. Walk down the street and kind of put your hand this way and pray for your neighbor. Pray for those who are on the street. For you see, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be judging those people that live next door. We're not supposed to be saying, oh, well, all their money goes up in the toys, over that fancy car, swimming pool, big six-bedroom house. We're not supposed to be doing that. We're not supposed to be walking down, down the street saying, oh, well, they sit at home and watch a, a church on YouTube. They should be in church. And then you shake your finger and say, y'all are going to hell because you don't come to church. We're not supposed to be doing that. Walk down the street, put your hand out, and pray. Just 
pray for them to receive God's blessing. Pray for them to feel God's love. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to say, I pray for them because they cuss. I pray for them because they're, they're bigots. I pray. No, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. This, this scripture tells us that we are supposed to just be praying God's blessing. Because I tell you what, you put enough prayer on a house, you put enough prayer on a family that, that doesn't even know they're being prayed for, I guarantee you they're going to be so full of prayer, so full of God's work, is they're going to come out, the Holy Spirit's going to lead them out to introduce themselves to you. Now that's a good thing. So what are you supposed to do then? Well... Some folks will do this right here. Well, I'm glad you come out. I've been praying for you every day. Let me tell you about this book I read. No, no, no. Do not do that. Sit and listen to them. Introduce yourself and listen to them. And then, and then, say, well, you know what? Let me pray for you while, while I'm getting ready to finish more. So can I say a quick prayer for you? They're going to let you do that. But then they're going to go in the house and you know what they're going to say? Oh my God, I'm never going to run into that person again. All they want to do is pray. They want to talk and pray. But that's okay. That's okay because they know who you are now. They can see that Christ lives in your heart and lives who you are and that your acceptance to everyone regardless of who they are. And you keep praying for them, for God to fill them with joy, God to fill them with hope, God to fill them with blessing, that God will cherish their life and let them feel it. And then something will happen to where they're going to come out and see you walk in and say, Man, can I talk to you real quick? I'm, I'm going through this time of trouble. Will you pray with me? It happens. That's the way it happens. Instead of saying something ugly or negative about them, pray for them. You don't have to pray for their attitude. You don't have to pray for, for the way they live their life. I don't want you to pray for anything like that. I just want you to pray a blessing over them. As you walk down the street, my wife's going to make me go walking today just for this right here. I know she is. I can see it in her face. I can't even see where she's sitting. If you talk about walking, boy, pull a walk with me. <laughs> and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my hand out like this as I walk down the street and I'm going to pray for everybody on my block. And the mile that we walk, I'm going to just ask God to bless them. Because God's church is open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a different faith. It doesn't matter if you're a, a, a foreigner. It doesn't matter if you're here legally. It doesn't matter if you're here illegally. It does not matter if you're white, black, brown, whatever. All that matters is that God loves you and wants you to come to worship Him so that He can continue to bless you in the best way He knows how. That's what it matters. Amen? Let's pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this time. And Father, we pray that these words, they, they sit on our hearts. And as they sit there, let Ezekiel change those words for our heart, the heart of God. Father, we are not perfect. We don't claim to be perfect. We make mistakes. But as we leave here today, let us start anew so that we can be a witness those around us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you accept our gifts as fragrant offerings so that we may continue to do your work in this kingdom here and now. Not when we get there, but to help those who live a life of abundance. In Jesus we pray. Amen.
How cool is that? And you know what? This is open to everybody. We have a lot of visitors, we have a lot of guests, but this right here is a cable set for everyone. It is set by God's hand. It is set by the death of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. Those who put Him in the tomb. It is set for the thieves on the cross. It is set for the beggars and forgivers. It is set by anyone who is searching for God's love. Christ made that sacrifice when He was nailed to the cross. Before he went, he took the loaf of bread, he raised it to the heavens, he broke that bread, and he gave it back. And he said, This is my body, which I will give to you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. He then took the cup, and he raised it, he gave it back to the heavens, and he said, This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, shed for you. For me, for forgiveness of sins. Hey, drink, and as often as you do, do this. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm going to ask those helping serve communion today to please come up. Yesterday we celebrate communion by teaching. I'll offer you a piece of bread. Don't eat it. But if you do, it's okay. It was always okay. You'll step to one side, you'll get that bread in the cup, and then you'll consume it. If you like, you're more than welcome to spend some time at the prayer room where we have a little needle over there. If, the, if, the, if you care to do that. The table's set, my friends. Please join us.
It's all been fed. Let us stand as our band sings us out. And before we do that, let us stand and bring our hands together or, or up in the air as, as we pray to these little buckets right here. Heavenly Father, we pray blessings, your blessings, upon each one of these buckets today. We ask that you fill them, overflow them with your love and generosity and your joy as they are spread and shared with those who cannot make it here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us continue to stand as we sing and worship our way out. <laughs>
I think that's what that scripture really means. He came to shake things up. Amen. He came to rock this place. He came to, to shake it up, to make people understand that His church is not just for a select few, but it is for everybody that wants to be part of something great. And that's why He did. Go from here and know. They say hello to Charlie Bones in the back. Go from here and know that God loves you and that Christ died for you and God gave to shake it up. Go from here, my brothers and sisters. Next week, we're going to see how the young house falls down. Be blessed. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I had fun with it. But I was going to fall in with it. <laughs> that last one was so hard. It's a